Hey guys and welcome back to another top 10 video. Today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 strongest starter Pokemon. But before we start today guys, I just want to say that I'm not going to be including Mega Evolutions. So without that out of the way, let's get started. Coming in at number 10 is Decidueye. Decidueye's main strategy is to set up Swords Dance and then to use Sucker Punch to get priority over your opponent. And if you want to play some mind games while they try to predict your Sucker Punches, you can also use Leaf Blade and Spirit Shackle, which is the strongest physical ghost type move uh, apart from Phantom Force. Now, the main problem with Decidueye and the reason it isn't higher on this list is because of its lackluster speed and defense. Its special defense is surprisingly good and it has a 100 special attack which unfortunately uh, doesn't go to good use uh, because of his attack. So honestly for the future I think that Decidueye could probably have his special attack turned down maybe to boost his speed or defense. But overall Decidueye is a pretty solid Pokemon, definitely not a bad Pokemon but not the best and that's why it is number 10 on this list. Coming in at number 9 is something you guys probably didn't expect, but it is Chestnut. Now, Chestnut is a Pokemon that I didn't even expect to be that good, but after doing some research for this video, apparently he is actually really good. So, Chestnut has some pretty decent stats. It's got 122 defense with 88 in HP, which is pretty decent. It's not the best, but it's definitely going to uh, tank a lot of physical hits. On the special side, that's probably where one of its weaknesses are. If we have a look uh, at its moves, it actually gets access to Spikes, Synthesis, and its own special protect move, which is Spiky Shield, which if a Pokemon makes contact while he's used Spiky Shield, they will take some damage. He can also use Roar and Drain Punch, which are also some pretty good moves, and Leech Seed. And mainly, I see a lot of people using this as a physical wall with Rocky Helmet. It's got the ability Bulletproof, which blocks it from some Ball and Bomb moves, which means it's protected against Seed Bomb, Shadow Ball, which are both very common moves. Overall, Chestnut is held back by its pretty bad special defense and its typing's not the best either. Grass Fighting is four times weak to flying and that's not that bad. We've seen some Pokemon do good with that fighting, such as Breloom, but Breloom had Spore to make up for that. Honestly, if Chestnut had some better stats, then maybe we'd see him go up a tier, but it definitely a solid Pokemon for number nine. Coming in at number 8 is Feraligator. Now, Feraligator is extremely underrated by most people. He's actually really good because of his ability Sheer Force and his access to the move Dragon Dance. Now, if you don't know what Sheer Force does, it actually boosts the power of moves that have secondary effects and it removes the secondary effects. Only if those secondary effects are good. Now, most people like to run uh, Liquidation, Ice Punch, and Crunch. That's what I like to run as well, plus Dragon Dance. And Life Orb, with Sheer Force, Life Orb actually doesn't give you recoil damage, so you get a free Life Orb, it's pretty cool. Overall, there isn't much else to say about this Pokemon. Its main problem is that, basically, it's a pure water type, so it doesn't get stabbed from a lot of moves, and its speed is quite low, so a lot of the time it'll get outsped by Scarf users, and a Dragon Dance won't help it from that, but if you are able to set up multiple Dragon Dancers, I'm pretty sure that you're going to be sweeping through a lot of people's teams. If you don't have a check for this thing, it's going to destroy your team. Coming in at number 6 is a particularly underrated Pokemon, and that is Empoleon. Now, Empoleon uh, has some pretty decent stats. It's got 111 special attack and 101 speed. Its defense isn't all that bad either, which is 88, but it used to be a whole lot better back in Gen 5 and 4 because of the steel typing. Uh, resisting dark and ghost types which it doesn't anymore unfortunately but it has access to so many moves like defog stealth rock and raw which it's just a really great support pokemon you could run the sub patea set which is honestly really good and sometimes if you really want to surprise your opponent you could even run a physical set it has access to sword stance moves like aqua jet drill peck earthquake and rock slide so it actually has a pretty decent physical move set which i found out by doing some research on this video and uh, honestly its main problems is uh, special walls because it can't really get through them especially if they're immune to its toxic which can't whittle it down and it is definitely weak to physical attackers that are super effective to it like uh, mega aerodactyl is a pretty big threat in uu and it just pretty much destroys empoleon but a uh, very solid pokemon bringing it in at number six 
Coming in at number 6 is Swampert. Now Swampert has some pretty good stats. It's got 110 attack and 100 in HP making it very bulky with 90 in both defense stats. Now Swampert has access to pretty much what I believe the best attack in the game is Stealth Rock. And it can set up Stealth Rock, it can eat attacks and it's typing water ground is one of the best in the game makes him an even better wall. It also has access to moves like Roar and Earthquake and an Earthquake from a Swampert is going to do heaps of damage even uninvested may take out some Pokemon such as Infernape. Honestly the main problem here with Swampert is Grass types that's pretty much the only weakness. Uh, it can get set up a bit if uh, Pokemon are immune to Toxic but uh, apart from that really solid Pokemon a good fit for number 6. Coming in at number 5 is Primarina. Now when you first look at Primarina, the first thing you're going to notice is that 126 special attack. Now Primarina, along with having really high special attack, also has access to some really strong moves. It's got Hydro Pump, Moonblast, Psychic, it's also got Energy Ball for some coverage as well. Basically a really powerful wall breaker in the UU tier. People usually run it with choice specs. And honestly, I think it's a really great wall breaker. A definitely underrated Pokemon. You don't see many people say it's that good, but it really is a great Pokemon. So it definitely deserves its spot at number 5 on this list. Next up and number 4 is Infernape. Now, those of you that know me, Infernape is my favourite Pokemon. I'm trying to not be biased here by saying that Infernape has made it to number 4. And those of you that know competitive Pokemon know how good Infernape is. Basically, Infernape is so versatile. It's got access to so many moves and its stats mean it can be played in so many different ways. It can be played as a physical wall breaker, a choice scarf user, revenge killer. It can be used as a life orb mixed attacker, even with some Z crystals. It's just got so many moves. It's got U-turn, flare blitz, close combat, gunk shot, stone edge, earthquake, thunder punch. Basically, so many different moves that you could run. When you see an Infernape you have no idea what to expect basically it's just a really unpredictable Pokemon and it can be used to take out so many things like you could be using a special attack to take down a physical wall then the Blissey switches in thinking you're a special attacker and then bam you hit it with that close combat and it just drops that is why Infernape is number four on this list coming in at number three is Superior now those of you who don't really pay attention to the competitive metagame might be surprised because without Superior's hidden ability, it sucks. It's just honestly, I would say it's the worst, even worse than Meganium. It's got a really weird stat distribution being fast and some good defense at the same time. It's kind of weird, but basically why Superior is so good is because of its hidden ability contrary plus Leaf Storm. Basically, every time Superior uses Leaf Storm, it gets plus two in its special attack, which is basically insane and is able to sweep through teams if they don't have a check. Superior is so good that it's in the A plus rank in UU, and personally, my experiences is that Superior is just so good. You could run a sub seed set, you could just run an all-out attacking set with Dragon Pulse and Glare. It's just honestly a really great Pokemon to use. And the Leaf Storm strategy, while it is predictable, it still is extremely effective. Coming in at number 2 is Greninja. Now, Greninja is the only starter Pokemon in OU at the moment apart from Megas. This is pretty... Crazy. I mean, a couple of generations ago, we would have had two, three starters in the OU tier. Now we're only down to one, and that is Greninja. And basically, Greninja has two really good abilities. It's got Protean, which makes it get stab bonus on every single attack, and Battle Bond, which allows it to turn into Ash Greninja, which is basically a mega evolution for it. Now, Ash Greninja is extremely strong. It's got extremely high stats really good wall breaker but unfortunately the catch about this pokemon is that you have to get a knockout before you can actually uh, use it so you have to get a knockout with it and some people they'll see it coming and they'll make sure that greninja isn't the one to get the ko but also with the protein set you see it used a lot with mixed attackers you could run a physical or a special one doesn't matter it's got great moves it's got access to rock slide shadow sneak uh, ice beam it also gets low kick as well gunk shot u-turn and of course you could always run a hydro pump set and it's also got spikes and toxic spike just like infernape really diverse pokemon most of the time you're not going to know what it's going to be running so a really great pokemon overall
Now before we get to number one, I'd like to mention my honorable mention, which is Sceptile. Now, Sceptile recently has been dropping in usage. Uh, its Mega is still in UU, but we're not talking about Megas today. Regular Sceptile is in Enyu at the moment, and the main problem with Sceptile is that with its lack of moves. Now, it really only has access to Leaf Storm and Dragon Pulse. You could run Hidden Power, but apart from that, that's your only option. It's really predictable. A lot of Pokemon Wall Sceptile, you could use it as a niche revenge killer with choice specs because you don't have to run choice carve of course because Sceptile is extremely fast with 120 speed the second fastest starter Pokemon so a really strong Pokemon unfortunately didn't make the list but definitely thought I should mention it somewhere in this video Alright, coming in at number one, most of you guys expected it anyway, it's pretty obvious, is Blaziken. Now, I personally don't like Blaziken because it's another firefighting Pokemon to compete with Infernape, and I just think Infernape's better, but Speed Boost is just nothing to laugh at. It is insanely powerful. It is absolutely broken. It is too overpowered for this game. It's in Ubers. It's the only starter Pokemon to be in Ubers, although Greninja was Uber at the end of last generation. Not sure why. It wasn't that good, but basically this Pokemon can sweep through entire teams. It's got moves like Earthquake, uh, Sky Uppercut, Brave Bird, Flare Blitz, it's basically going to sweep through your entire team with a speed boost. It's also got Swords Dance as well. So pretty much if you see this Pokemon, you are screwed uh, in most cases, especially if you don't have a check or a counter this Pokemon, you're basically just going to lose straight up. But uh, yeah, definitely a really great Pokemon, deserves number one. Even if I don't like it, I can't deny how good it is. Alright guys, that is it for this video. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and give me some suggestions for what you want in a top 10 video. I'm going to be working on some more Wi-Fi battles, kind of some more trolly teams. If you guys got some weird Pokemon sets you want me to try out, uh, just leave them in the comments. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys next video.